heroes are an inspiring group of people. Every one of them, from the larger-than-life comic book heroes you see on the big silver screen to the everyday heroes that let us live the privileged lives we do. Every hero has a story to tell. The doctor saving lives at your local hospital. The war veteran down the street who risked his lives for our freedom. The police officers and firefighters who risk their safety to ensure ours. Every hero is special and every story worth telling. But there is one class of heroes that I think is often ignored. The entrepreneur. The creator. The producer. The ones who look at the problems in this world and think to themselves, you know what? I can fix that. I can help people. And I can make a difference. Then they go out and do exactly that by creating a new product or introducing a new service. Some go on to change the world. Others make a world of difference to their customers. Welcome to The Hero Show. Join us as we pull back the masks of the world's finest heropreneurs and learn the secrets to their powers, their success, and their influence. So you can use those secrets to attract more sales, make more money, and experience more freedom in your business. I'm your host, Richard Matthews, and we are on in three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to The Hero Show. My name is Richard Matthews, and I am live on the line today with Gabe Ripley. Gabe, are you there? Hey, how are you? Yes, absolutely. You're loud and clear. Awesome. Glad to have you here today. So let me do a quick introduction for you. I got my notes over here on this side. Um, so you are a um, computer geek, progressive business person, event producer, business partner, freelance amplifying arti artist, um, and several other things. One of the, the cool things that I saw in your, your bio here is you ran a tattoo studio that you built all the way up to multiple millions of dollars that you just recently shut down 2018. Well, th yeah, that's a, a, a a roller coaster of a ride of a story. Uh, yeah, it was uh, inadvertently shut down. But uh, inadvertently yeah, shut down. You know, uh, I learned uh, for years of, about how to, to grow a retail business or businesses, uh, but then also about the importance of uh, having a solid foundation and just uh, the importance of vetting people and a, a lot of a lot of things that people had told me how to do. You know, making sure you actually have a good lawyer and an accountant and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, no, that's a, a bittersweet story. There was a lot of uh, great that came out of it. Uh, it came to a bitter end, uh, but uh, now we are taking all the lessons and putting them to use, uh, you know, in, in different ways. And uh, yeah. you know, again, and so, the, the... so now you focus on a business called Tattoo Now. Is that correct? It, correct. Yeah, and then it's actually the the foundation uh, that came before the off the map that came before the the retail spaces, um, where we use technology. Uh, and, you know, and proper business uh, tools to help amplify positive uh, artists, mostly tattoo, you know, through Tattoo Now, tattooers and uh, tattoo studio owners, uh, events. And uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. We've been using uh, technology for, well, since the mid 90s, really, you know, officially since like 99. And uh, pretty much primarily in the tattoo world, although there's other arts that, uh, and crafts that I uh, definitely love working with, too. Yeah. So, um, and I also noticed that it, you uh, you teach and speak on running tattoo businesses. So you actually help yeah. other entrepreneurs in that space to grow their their businesses as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of uh, what works is just you know it's sharing, right? And um, a lot of this actually comes as a direct influence from my wife. You know, she's a, a an early childhood educator, and you know the human brains are, are probably the most valuable resource, right? In a, in a in a business sense, not in a cold sense, but really people. Um, and, and the brains are the, you know, when you're developing them have the, you know, the best uh, return, right? And not just financially, but uh, effect wise, right? Um, so yeah, so anyways, the point being, uh, through her influence, I realized that sharing what I've learned with other people, of course, um, was, was uh, my responsibility, I suppose. And, and again, that, since the, uh, uh, you know, I, I spent 10 years talking specifically about how to build uh, up great businesses. Uh, and now a lot of the lessons that I teach are, you know, how to do that the proper way uh, so that, you know, the, some of the things that I fucked up, uh, you know, other people don't because, um, you know, a lot, a lot of that stuff really does have to be put in the right order. Uh, doing yeah. it out of order, you know, can mean all the difference. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So let me know. I want to, the first question I have for you basically is what is it that you're known for now? What's your business like now? What do people come to you for? Uh, what's your primary like revenue drivers in your business now? Well, it's it's a couple different. Uh, now I'm a freelancer, so I have you know probably about five to seven different clients and projects. Um, I work for a couple of different tattoo studios. Again, having the experience of both building up and then losing uh, you know a great business um, puts me in a unique position to do a stress test and to help people really because the goal is to be able to produce a really healthy you know business. And inside of the tattoo world or any any kind of uh, you know 
I mean, any kind of world, business world, it's tough just to get a culture of healthy people that want to communicate and be best in class, you know, or, or if you don't want to be best in class, not like, but everyone has to be on the same page. And so, so that's part of my skill set and, and part of how I help people. Um, I'm also an event producer. So for years, I would, and I do, uh, produce events where we create uh, environments where you know professional development is generally the focus. Um, so, so we'll pick unique locations and have specific invite lists and, and try to curate you know live events that that bring in anywhere between a couple hundred or a couple thousand people, um, you know, all in the same wavelength. Um, so I so I work with with events and, and a couple specifically, and then I have a, a supply company or two that uh, I work with. So that uh, again, I'm uh, I could take a peek at like all the different pieces parts of a business, um, and then you know see see what people are or they need, see what ingredients they have, see what they want to go. You know, a lot of it's uh, defining mission and values, communication structures. Um, and then marketing, of course, you know, uh, is one of the fun parts uh, to, to be able, especially with tattooers, you know, to be able to tell their stories uh, in, in honest ways through a variety of different mediums to attract like-minded people who want to get tattooed by them. Uh, again, when, when, when those are positive tattooers that are part of a, a positive life-changing story for people. Um, it's kind of funny, and I'll, and I'll sorry, I'll wrap this up because it's, I know it's a little long, but I'm doing a couple different things for a lot of people, but, but generally, the, with the, the umbrella of it all is, um, you know, tattooing marks people for life, and if that's done in a positive, mindful manner, that means that the person who's getting tattooed is going to, the, to remember this experience, and, you know, in a positive manner for the rest of their life, and so, when, you know, business-wise, that's a compounding effect, you know, every single day for the rest of their life, all of the tattoo shop, and tattoo artists, and tattoo conventions, and in some ways, tattoo supply companies, all of their clients are going to remember that story. So um, when, when people are deliberate about making a positive experience, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous positive effect. It really, you know, every business is like, you know, we want to make the world better, you know, through better toilet paper or whatever. But, but tattooing actually does make people more complete, better people. Um, so what I'd like to do is help amplify the people that are in that space that have positive voices um, through using, uh, you know, mostly business, uh, you know, and, and you know, philosophical, political, you know, ideas. Um, so I have, I have an interesting sort of like follow-up question on that because you have a very positive outlook on the tattooing mm -hmm. industry. And historically, that industry was one that was started as like in the criminal underbelly kind of thing. And tattooing was illegal a lot of, a lot of states for a long time. Yeah, um, it's and recent I know that's history, changed right? a lot. Yeah, it's, sure. it's recent so, so, history. So well, it's like, be, you know, the oldest, the oldest people that are getting unfrozen right from the tundras uh, have had tattoos often, mm -hmm. um, right? So, so certainly, and I, and I fall into the same, I, you may have even quoted me on it, sometimes I'll fall into the same thing where it's like, recently it's been thugs and, and sailors, but like everyone has been getting tattooed since we've been people. Yeah, been since like, like the, the, the earliest yeah. time of days, but like, I know like in the U.S. it was illegal until just recently, like in the last 30 or 40 years, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and in Connecticut, where I grew up, it was illegal uh, for the first you know, five to six years that I was getting tattooed. You know, I lived up in uh, uh, Massachusetts, or, or was it the other way around? Yeah, it was uh, illegal up here in Massachusetts, so I was heading down to Connecticut to get tattooed. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, either deliberate, it's amazing, right? So it's a very self-empowering art, you know, so and it has been, again, as we were talking about since the dawn of, of, of people, uh, so either it was deliberate or you know, and I think there's a lot of things that are self-empowering that mm -hmm. the powers that be through the course of history have tried to suppress or, you know, again, had made illegal. And, uh, and I was recently over in, in Eastern Europe where it was illegal, you know, 15 years ago, I think, you know, it's been closer. They were under communist rule, right? So everything yeah. was much more closed. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, I suppose, uh, Again, it's either deliberate or, or it just happened that, you yeah. know, this amazing self-empowering art has been pushed to the outskirts. Uh, but it's pretty amazing to think that, um, you know, again, through the pioneering works of amazing tattooers, uh, you know, bringing real artistic sensibilities into, into tattooing it, now in our modern uh, sense in America, uh, you know, in, in other places. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's amazing, right? And so I guess... Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm curious, like, how... Because you talk, you talked a little bit about marketing. Is how do you market tattoo, or like tattoo artists and the tattoo industry, when you have a like a subset of our generations that still think of tattoo tattoos and tattooing in a negative criminal sense? When like I know the younger generations don't have that because it hasn't been illegal for for them. But I know like 
there's like you have a mix there and I know that's got to be a hard story to sell um, yeah, you know I, I've never really been uh, interested in trying to attract the masses or large groups of you know or even large groups of people right now I mean just in general um, for me you know again just kind of the way I grew up I, I never uh, like getting a hold of the being cool or being part of the big crowd isn't necessarily something that I've never uh, tried to gravitate towards. Um, and so when I was getting into this, it was, uh, you know, tattooing again, it was anti somewhat counterculture. Anti-establishment. Yeah. You know, anti-establishment counterculture. Um, but you know, again, it, it doesn't just getting tattooed doesn't necessarily make you rebellious anymore, you know, or, or you know, being rebellious is what makes you rebellious, you know? And I suppose, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, you get tattooed to be cool. It's almost the same, like getting tattooed to be rebellious or getting tattooed to fit in. Um, you know, mostly I think you should get tattooed because you have something on the inside that you want to express on your outside, you know, and, uh, and, and you can't not, right? So you have to find a great artist to, to be able to, to kind of make you feel complete. And again, but there's, again, that's a specific type of person to get that kind of tattoos. It's like, like, so even in the, in the realm of tattoos, where I kind of find myself isn't necessarily in where everyone's getting tattooed. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, but that's always kind of served me well, right? So, I, but as a business, you don't have to work with everybody, right? You only have to yeah. work with your like-minded people. And, um, you know, so, so you know, I'll, like things like, you know, trying to find eco-friendly tattoo suppliers or something or, or ethical tattoo suppliers that are, are, are keeping the, the morals and, uh, of tattooing still strong in, in their businesses. Um, you know, those things do still matter. You know, it's easy to, to get cheaper at places. Um, but again, if you're, if you're just, if you're trying to be positive and tattooing gives us enough uh, business power so that we can actually choose you know, where we're spending our money with ethical suppliers or, or moral suppliers. And um, a lot of the people that I listen to in the tattoo world really take that responsibility seriously because tattooing is, uh, allows us such an amazing lifestyle um, that we really do want to make sure that we're using it um, to, to continuously be positive, you know, and again, to bring positive energy in the world and to, uh, to live uh, in a manner that, uh, you know, is in alignment with the values, you know. Um, yeah. So real quick, before we get too far into your story, what's your favorite tattoo so far you've got? Uh, the favorite tattoo that I have on me, the next one, right? Now, um, you know, I've got uh, a, a great collection, right? Um, uh, you know, if you go to the website, you'll see the list of tattooers on there and picking any one is uh, pretty difficult. You know, the one of my daughter isn't quite finished. Um, you know, the love birds on my neck for my wife. Uh, I can't see every day, uh, but I'm pretty much... Uh, you know, I've got a, a lot of great work from a lot of great artists that, I, that I've uh, appreciated. So it's, that's a tough question to answer. <laughs> it's a hard question. Yeah, I can imagine. So um, one of the things we talk about all the time on the show is your origin story, right? So every entrepreneur, every hero has their um, origin story. It's where you started to realize that you were different, that maybe you could use your superpowers to help people. Um, so where did you start to discover or develop, um, you know, the value that you can bring to this world and really get into the entrepreneur world? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I've always been a computer geek, right? So I don't know how this uh, is going <laughs> to yeah, go. Geek yeah, power, right. there you go. Um, so uh, I was always a computer programmer uh, from a very young age. Um, I mean, I guess everyone's on computers nowadays, but this would be, uh, I was born in 74. So, you know, early 80s, I was uh, programming uh, when I was about eight or nine years old. Whenever I wanted to play the video game, you know, I'd have to program it out in basic. And uh, so, so computers were something that always uh, I was able to dive into. It was an environment that you know behaved very similarly, even though the world is very crazy and chaotic, or even more chaotic at the time. Um, the computer, you know, you feed it in instructions, and it'll do what you know you just told it to do. Uh, now, at the time, the instructions were like 16 pages, you know, of basic code, line by line. You have to get every single one right, and then you could play Pong. And, uh, and I didn't have the recorder, you know, so yeah. I had to retype it out every time. So uh, point being, as far as origin stories, like for me, computers and programming, I started uh, doing that from a very young age. And um, so I started feeling, you know, in my early, uh, late teens, early 20s, I was uh, freelancing, right? So I, I picked up, a, you know, a gig about, for about eight months at a, at a video game company where I, I really learned a lot, you know, working in the, in the real industry. But then I immediately kind of went out to do freelance work. And um so, 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 yeah, so I guess mostly for, for me, what I realized is uh, I was able to do like real high value programming work and, and computer work for you know, big corporations. You know, I, I would, I would uh, hitchhike around or, or travel around to different freelance gigs, um, Honda, Epcot Center, uh, to throw around some of the big names, you know, uh, 
and when I, when I would come back, I'd use those same skills to work with artists, you know, musicians, tattooers, and, um, you know, they, they wasn't getting paid the same, you know, uh, obviously corporations have real dough, uh, make a real programmer rates. Um, but, you know, it was amazing to be able to produce the same amount of value and, and in some ways, uh, even more value, you know, so people would pay me a lot of money to do computer work for, to sell, you know, cars and we yeah. sell a lot of cars. Um, but if we were now presenting, you know, badass rock and roll bands or, or in this case, you know, tattooers, you know, really it was kind of the, the convergence of a couple of different interests and, and forces at work. Um, but boom, all of a sudden, you know, if I found myself, uh, wait a minute, when we're using computers uh, to, to present and educate people about awesome tattoos, then they want to get more tattoos, you know? And so those, uh, you know, again, from the, from the mid nineties, you know, and, and some of the people that I'm working with, they, they really did um, stick their neck out and, and, and pave ways inside of the, you know, to, to combat the negative stereotypes, to, uh, to remind the world, to remind America, you know, remind their sp perspective communities, um, that this tattooing, this art that again is, is primal and ancient, uh, really can be awesome and positive and, and produce great effects. So, um, yeah. So anyways, uh, in my early, uh, late teens, early twenties, I realized that I could use computers and I was able to speak computer very well. And, uh, most computer geeks, uh, can't speak people speak and yeah. I don't know, arguable whether I can, you know, I'm getting better at it. Uh, but, uh, at least, uh, again, from there, I've kind of always, uh, paved my way helping tattooers and other, other types of artists and other people who create value, um, you know, a couple of musicians, some restaurants, you know, a couple of various uh, other, other places. Um, again, mostly uh, define, uh, again, all the computer stuff in the world is great. That was the start. Um, but then you need to make sure that the whole other business engine is positive and healthy around it. Cause you can have a lot of a great promotion engine and do a lot of great computer work. Uh, but if you're pumping that energy and money into something that's not healthy, uh, I've watched it with holes in it, then it uh, it just leaks. So so tons of ways to explode it. That's sort of how so that's basically the birth of Tattoo Now, right? Because Tattoo Now is a is a technology company that's helping tattoo tattoo artists sort of grow their business in a healthy way. Yeah. Okay. Well. So so yeah. So I, I, we we started programming websites for the tattooers in the mid '90s, and then um, officially, I think it was like 2019, uh, It was just you know 20 years ago. Uh, and again, it's a formulation of, of these businesses is somewhat nebulous, right? We were doing websites, and then we had two or three clients, and then six to ten clients. And um, but yeah, all of a sudden we found we were getting a, a serious amount of traction using technology to help present tattoos to the public. Again, this is uh, when people are first hopping online and uh, you know, we're always pretty good computer geeks. So we're able to attract a lot of the right people. And um, from there, you know, again, that was, uh, like I said, nearly 20 years ago. So from there, spent five or six years, you know, really building up the technology business, building up Tattoo Now. And then um, ultimately we, you know, uh, spent 10 years, 12 years uh, using that technology uh, on our own retail locations. And, uh, and now, boom, I'm back to uh, using that technology uh, and, and focusing on using that technology and, and the thoughts and that experience uh, specifically for, for other clients. And uh, for, for the time being, at least, uh, it's kind of fun to be like a little bit egoless, right? I don't have my own tattoo shop. I don't have my own real thing. I'm, I'm just working for other people and other people's projects. And um, yeah, like I said, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty fun. That's really cool. It's a fun story to, uh, to go all the way from like learning to program at nine years old to getting into tattoo artistry and like use, learning to use technology as a way to help tattoo artists. And it's, it's just a, it's a cool story to show that, you know, some of the things that you, you can like blend your passions and turn them into a real business that's helping people. So. Uh, absolutely. But I would be remiss without, uh, it's not all, it's, it's great. And, uh, and especially in the tattoo world and the art world, it's amazing. Some of the opportunities that are afforded us, but it's a, a roller coaster ride. And as, and as awesome as imagine. it is, it sounds, you know, it could be as crazy. And, and it's, uh, you know, you have, especially in tattooing, you have to truly love it. You know, and again, it's, a, it's, a, it's tattooing is an exceptionally intense art, right? Again, you're, you're really, it's, it's shamanic, you know, in a, in a very secular way. It's a, it's an experience again, that people take to their grave. So, so there's more money in it. There's more energy in it. Um, yeah, and my so, understanding is like the actual work of tattooing can be grueling, right? Where you spend 10, 12 hours just on one thing. 
you know, on a, with, with a person who's in pain, you know, especially if you're talking about long sessions like that. And if you're talking about master tattoo pieces, you know, you can do them in three to four hour sessions, large pieces, but you know, again, it, it, there's so many variables, right? And that, that's yeah. part of navigating the tattoo world is that um, there's so many nuances and the, you know, but the good news is, I mean, especially, you know, for people that treat it seriously is, you know, you just learn those lessons on how to be positive and how to give back more than you take and how to uh, uh, think about, you know, th what your decisions are now can affect you both tomorrow and on your deathbed. You know, mm -hmm. there's other decisions that you make that will affect you for long periods of time. Of course there are, there's tons of them, but you know, tattooing is, is one of the most intense ones that you can decide, uh, you know, today to get a tattoo, you know, if you get a good one, it might take you a while to get the appointment. Point being is you can mark yourself today and it's going to affect you, you know, every single day for the rest of your life. And, um, you know, you need to really make sure that, you know, you're, you're patient, you're doing your research. Um, so that it becomes a positive experience. You know, it's really easy, you know, likewise, I guess I talk about it in a positive way. Likewise, it's also really easy to fuck it up. And yeah. if you uh, rush into it without understanding it, um, you're, you tend to make mistakes that are easy to make and very difficult to fix. You know, t testing the waters here or there before you're really ready. Um, again, you know, it's tattoos are going to be there. You know, and again, I guess it's, I say for the rest of your life. You know, until you get it lasered enough so you can cover it up, or you know, or, or you know, there are a couple other special circumstances. But um, anyway, that's I don't know. There's so there's so many lessons that tattooing yeah. teaches us, and it's so intense. Um, you know, and the business lessons are even more intense, right? So if you don't understand tattooing, you're just really trying to make money off of it you know, the, the real tattoo world to cut you right loose. And it's not, um, you know, it's, a, it's, it's just as crazy and difficult to navigate as it is awesome and fun to talk about on, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so my next question for you has to do with your superpowers. So one of the things we talk about frequently is you as as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, we, we, uh, we talk about the, the one thing that the skill that you sort of have, what is it you do or build or offer this world that really helps solve problems for people. And to sort of frame it in a way that's like, what's, what's the one skill or superpower you have that you think energizes everything else that you do? Um, I, I really, I, I've always been a fan of like science fiction, I suppose. So uh, for me, thinking about things, you know, and, and long distances and, or not long, well, both long distances and, and time and space, you know, I've been a, like Isaac Asimov is thinking about things, you know, gener thousands of generations from now when we're exploring the stars. Um, you know, that sense of longevity and, and thinking about things in that scale. Um, and then trying to fit all the puzzle pieces backwards, you know, so, so and, and it's a business. Yeah, like tool. working backwards from the, uh, from the long-term vision kind of thing. From the grandiose long-term vision, right? So, uh, you know, and again, I, I just kind of got that because I was reading science fiction and thinking about cool visions of the future or, or bad visions and dark visions of the future and trying not to do that. Um, or, or, or trying not to, you know, uh, encourage anybody or thinking along those lines or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, so I suppose, uh, from there, uh, you know, business wise, I'll, I'll be able to kind of see, a, a, an environment or, a, you know, playing field, I suppose, and, uh, really try to, um, affect positive change, you know, with, you know, knowing that it's the cast of characters, not anything that we're doing. It's, it's, it's helping funnel ideas and amplifying positive ideas. To, to the right people who are positive and, and amplifying ideas that, you know, creates a, a real good, uh, you know, positive effect. Um, so I think uh, uh, mostly being able to kind of see that and then doing my best, you know, and, it's, and I'm imperfect at it, but I'm, I'm, I'm you know, the, the goal is for me to like uh, try to see the, the fantastic future that this cast of characters can all kind of uh, work towards and, um, you know, Put it out there, see if it happens, and you know. Ultimately, at this point, I'm just here to help other people yeah. uh, use tools to fulfill their visions and, and their futures. Um, but you know, again, I'm, I'm relatively. I get to be picky about who I work with, so uh, everyone. <laughs> it's kind of a, a rare skill too to be able to um, essentially see the future and then build the present to get there. You know, uh, uh, or, and, or see a future, not the future. future. Yeah, <laughs> hey, see, a, see a possible future. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. See yeah. a possible future, and then put the building blocks in place now to go that direction. Um, sure. And, I've always been a Dungeons and Dragons player, role player. Or I, I haven't always been, but growing up, I, there was a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, a lot of storytelling, you know, and a lot of creation of worlds and whatnot. And um, 
I don't play video games at all anymore. Again, I try to I get out I get it out of the business and, the, and what I'm and I'm working on. Um, but again, na nature has its way of telling you what you know the future is actually going to bring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you try really hard to make something happen, and it's just not going to work. Um, but it is it is amazing to me how much influence you have over your future by the decisions you make today, um, which is uh, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So well, I want to yeah. flip the coin on that. So if you're the superpower is one side of the coin, the other side of the coin is your fatal flaw. Um, and you know, just like Superman has his kryptonite or Batman's not actually a superhero, he's just super dedicated. Something that you have struggled with in your business to, you know, that has either held you back or kept you from hitting things that you want to hit. Um, what would you say that is? And more importantly, how have you dealt with that for other businesses who might be listening to this um, so they can learn from your experience there? Yeah, uh, like learning how to communicate properly with people uh, and, and like leadership skills, right? So, I mean, obviously, like I said, I lost a, a multi-million dollar business, you know, uh, it, it grew uh, out of health, right? I, I grew the business uh, within the demand um, and not necessarily within uh, what was in my skill set to lead, right? So all of a sudden, when it starts yeah, to get a little, you know, it got started to get a little bit out of control, you know, and, and success will mask inefficiencies or problems, right? So, you know, if we would lose clients, um, you know, uh, if, if there were 10 clients that wanted to be sitting in the chair, then all of a sudden it's a little bit easier to, to lose track of, wait a minute, we need to make sure that, you know, we don't have any unhappy clients. You know, I mean, knowing that, of course, every, but again, the problem is nothing, nobody's perfect, nothing's perfect. Um, but, the, but the point being is, you know, maybe we'd lose an artist or two, and then they would uh, have legitimate, uh, you know, uh, issues. Um, but all of a sudden there's like, you know, five or six other tattooers that want to fill that spot. So, you know, uh, boom, all of a sudden it would be a little bit easy maybe not to fix that problem. Or we might not even know about the problem, right? There might just might be issues. Somebody would leave. They wouldn't necessarily communicate with us. We didn't necessarily, I didn't do, uh, you know, exit interviews all the time. Um, uh, point being is, um, uh, I grew, you know, the business outside of my skill level of leadership. And so, um, you know, one of my weaknesses, you know, sometimes I kind of laugh and it's, you know, I'll, I'll be, I, I can't see the, the, the trees through the forest. I'm just too busy moving on to, you know, the next thing and, and maybe a little bit too eager to, to give up responsibility for things that, um, you know, I should be properly training people to handle it or whatnot, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, sort of a, a selfish follow-up question on that is I'm, I'm sort of in that space now where my business is growing pretty quickly and I'm trying to temper it so it doesn't grow faster than I do, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> what is some, what's some of your advice to keep some of that sort of from, from growing beyond your, your ability to sort of manage it and, and lead it? Well, I mean, I suppose that uh, kind of leads to some of the other themes that you talk about is proper mentorship or skill set, right? So, I mean, I suppose for me, what I would what advise people is if you have something that's going and growing to have the ears and the advice of people that know how to deal with something or have dealt with something two or three times as big, right? Um, now, that might not necessarily always be you know, accessible, accessible, you might not know people that are doing, you know, multi millions and millions of dollars or whatever, or, or lead teams of 150 to 300 people or whatever. Um, so short of that, right, of, of directly taking your advice or hiring people that are skilled at leading teams larger than the team that you have, <clears throat> um, you know, again, envisioning the future and, and then making your bets on people that you're bringing in now for the value that's going to be in the future, right? So what I would say to perspective or to my clients now would be uh, when you're bringing people in, you have to vet them and, and you're betting your millions of dollars on them, right? So you, you actually have $2 million and you're putting them in their hands and being like, Hey, you want to you know, hold this responsibility for me? Right. And if you don't, that's, if you really can't way to think about that, you know, if, if you want to be best in class too, right? There's also, again, part of it is there's a, a wide variety of ways to do it. Not everyone has to take it that seriously. Not simple. Part of the issues you might have is that some people, if you want to take it that seriously, other people don't, right? You got, but again, you're, you're putting that risk in that person's hands because 10 years from now, 15 years from now, when you are a multi-million dollar business, uh, now that person has that value in their hands, you know, and if you, you know, you, you might make uh, uh, compromise decisions or let things go, you know, right now, because you know what, you know, it's a small business. It's only three people. How much damage can one person do? You know what? You know, so a little gossipy, you know, whatever. How, how bad yeah. could that hurt? You know, um, 
you know, other th and there was just a lot of, yeah. So other thing, yeah. So uh, one of my issues, yeah, I guess that was the thing, right? Uh, not seeing the trees and being able to communicate necessarily with, with people on a, on a very human level of, until it was too late. Um, and, uh, you know, there you go. Yeah, so it's, it's I, like I, learning I, to... <laughs> that. I, I, I plenty of weaknesses. I can't just pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Learning to deal with those issues now and, and really, really understanding that if you're trying to build a big business, you need to build a big business foundation. Absolutely. Right? So you can't uh, you build know, a big business on a small business foundation. A seriously skilled lawyer and accounting, you know, uh, from a place that knows your industry. You know, and again, in the tattoo world, it's pretty difficult to find lawyers and accountants that really understand it thoroughly enough. But, um, you know, it, and again, it, you know, for, for every business, you know, you need to make sure that your financial habits uh, are proper, right? And I grew up, you know, kind of poor white, not kind of poor white trash, I grew up poor white trash. I never, you know, I had a, uh, I don't have saving habits, right? I, you know, never mind uh, instilling them into my business. So I was kind of, grow, you know, growing something into to millions of dollars of, of business and energy. Um, without having proper financial discipline to understand exactly how it's all flowing. You know, I, I hired people, you know, and I trusted them and it's on me, you know, to, to make sure that it all works. But, um, you know, next time and what I advise people make, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're getting audited and you're going to court before you, you, you do so. Right. So you want to, you know, find yourself uh, a lawyers, you know, before you need them, you should be interviewing people if you don't have one in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, Cause it might take one or two or three or four tries to find a lawyer that you trust. And you want to, you know, probably pay a little bit of dough to have them push on your business, you know, uh, as if, you know, uh, somebody in real life, you know, is pushing on your business, you know, and again, for same thing mm -hmm. for your, your numbers, you know, get audited, make sure, you know, pay somebody to, uh, to audit you like the IRS would, you know, so, uh, you know, and then when you know that, boom, okay, now I'm protected. Um, you know, again, those are some of the really fundamental steps because if you start really building something awesome and big on top of a foundation that's, uh, you know, doesn't have that there, um, it's, again, it's amazing losing something and everybody being like, oh, you got such great lawyers, blah, blah, blah. You're like, I don't have a lawyer. That's fucking why I just lost it, you know? So yeah. uh, anyways, uh, yeah. That's a, that's a really interesting, interesting way to think about it too. Cause like I, one of my, one of my mentors actually mentioned like you need to have, she called it emergency planning. Right. Yeah. So um, everything from like, if you break your leg tomorrow and you're stuck in the hospital for a couple of weeks, like what does your business do? Right. And um, absolutely. It's so much easier to save up three to six months of all expenses now when it's a one to three to five person business than it is when it's a 30 person business. Right. So and again, that's where you got to get that shit there in the formulas right in the very beginning or as, as close to it as you can. That's, yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's one of the things I need to work on in my business is get all that stuff going and ready to 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 take it on right and I, I sort of have the feeling that like that's one of the things that's like I have I have a bit of a fear of growth and I think that's probably the reason where it's like I need to have all these things in place so I can grow and feel like I can you know still manage it and take care of it so yeah again uh, uh, growing something within the health of an organization whatever it is a business or any sort of community or culture um, it's tough like people are I mean people, we're all just animals right and so it's not even like I'm even passing judgment on anybody that didn't work out with like everyone has the right and should be playing with their own like minds. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I, I think that, you know, for me, it's like, I want to be able to communicate more and, and be clear and, um, in, in, in a manner that, uh, you know, and, and you know, it was like Patrick Lahoney and all the, the five dysfunctions of a team and, yeah. um, you know, uh, Jim Collins, all of those uh, kind of books or, or Nancy Dorte, you know, the, just being as clear, communicators as you possibly can be and like I said to cast that vision um, the sooner you can do that and if you're a small team like again there's so many times where I'll be you know out talking to people and like oh you know I don't I don't need to worry about that I'm not big yet and like you don't need to worry about it because you're not big yet you need to worry about it because you want to set it up right so as it grows you know, it's growing, right. You know, and if, uh, if somebody yeah. uh, is a gardener, you kind of get it right. If you just l let things kind of grow wild and, you know, without tending to it, um, you know, it, it's not as efficient or as precise as if you're, you know, uh, 
uh, trimming the trees uh, and, and pruning things and being intentional about uh, how things are growing. Yeah. So my next question for you has to do with your common enemy, right? So the common enemy, I like to think about this in terms of your, your clients. So in the tattoo now business, your clients are other tattoo shops, right? So what's one of the things that you regularly run into like mindsets or um, just things that are going on that you have to overcome or help them overcome um, that you see all the time that you wish if you could just wave your magic wand and help every one of your tattoo art, you know, studios and tattoo artist clients um, just get rid of that. Um, what would that be? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. To just some of these questions are a little, right, a little tough. I'm also, like I said, I'm a computer nerd, so I have to be precise. Like um, everyone's so different. There's, there's, I mean, there's commonalities, but everyone's pretty different, right? It's like a, lots mm -hmm. of fractally kind of thing. So I can't wave a magic wand and fix any tattooers or tattoo business owners' issues because they're all subtly different. Although that said, uh, you know, not a fear of business, but um, uh, um, I mean, it's also somewhat tough to like, you know, my, my thoughts on business are if we could use these powers for good, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's not like there's a, a ton of examples of that out there in the world. Uh, there are, you know, there are obviously, as we know, businesses that do things in an ethical, moral ways. There's like the big corporations that are a big group of them. And, um, and again, I've, and I've watched it, right? So, so for me, you know, I know on a level, if I work with artists to have a great vision, and they do quality work and they're awesome people, they show people an, an amazing experience, then amplifying, you know, that voice or that vision, you know, brings in more great tattoo people, brings in more clients, it's self, it becomes a self-perpetuating, um, you know, mechanism. Um, ah, crap, I lost it again. So was the my, question? my, my <laughs> question is like, is something that you run into with your tattoo artist that you think holds them back, okay. uh, oh, like right, that, you right, see, right. that you see commonly, yeah, yeah. So that would be the fear. So that would be not necessarily understanding that we could use business f for the forces of good. And, and ultimately, it's not uh, the, there are good people and there are bad people. P bad people who use the forces of business to like, you know, make money at the expense of people. And then good people can use business to help enable people to be the best that they can using economic engines. Right. And um, absolutely. So you know, for me, if I could, and again, that's what I, I love to do is help uh, artists and tattooers um, learn these mechanisms and these tools so that they could fulfill what their mission, uh, you know, is through the lens of their values. And, um, you know, but again, you can't just wave a magic wand and be like, hey, everybody, you could use business for good. Yeah. Right. Because I just wouldn't, it, you know, it just doesn't work. We, like we that. wish we could, right? You know, but enough, I mean, I, well, I suppose that's where my, uh, uh, you know, if I was to wave magic wands to wish for things, I'd wish that ice cream was healthy, affordable, and readily accessible. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> for business stuff, uh, you know, uh, a lot of it's you just kind of got to, you know, evolve and learn the hard way. People have to discover for themselves, you know, what makes them tick and what, you know, and, and so they're, and, and, and how they could uh, surround themselves with like minded people to make that thing happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, often you have to use to do it. Yeah. Capitalism can help make ice cream readily accessible and affordable, but I don't think it can make it healthy. <laughs> no, maybe science can though someday. Maybe science, maybe we can figure out a way to make healthy ice cream. Can we use CRISPR or whatever, I guess? Uh, or maybe like, maybe they'll just, you know, develop a second stomach that just, you know, you can eat it and taste it, but then it doesn't go into your body and turn it into fat or something. It just gets well, uh, taken out. <laughs> it is pretty intense. You know, I do listen to a fair amount of podcasts and science and again, you know, sciencey things. And um, it feels like the same kind of evolution, revolution, whatever, whatever we just are watching and we're engaging with, with technology. Um, it really seems like we're going to happen with a biology, you know, because if they have the genetic codes like mapped out and shit and they're using CRISPR to edit it, you know, yeah. what happens another hundred years from now? Like yeah. after they've I been just, doing that shit, for, you know. I just got a whole bunch of health genetic testing done on uh -huh. like, like finding out all the, the, you like your propensities for like, you know, everything down to like how your body responds to vitamin E from a genetic level. Um, and I got like 60 pages back. It was super fascinating. And I'm like, right. this is the kind of stuff that like 10 years ago wasn't even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's yeah. absolutely. And so if you think, yeah. And so for me to, or I mean, for all of us to just think about how um, the people that are hard at work now, you know, they're, they're starting to learn the language. They're starting to understand the tools to do it. You know, at some point, you know, what are they going to have? I mean, 
biological, you know, DNA printers, right? You know, they put in all of the, I don't know, it's, it's crazy, amazing stuff. Maybe we can make ourselves superheroes, right? Like the, uh, like talking about the show, you can actually go into the superhero shop and they'll, you know, tattoo your DNA the right way. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's the, that's the part that I still haven't quite wrapped my head around. Right. So, the, so like, if you could edit it, like, how do you then like, I, and I can understand how you would be able to do that in like in, in seeds or in a, in, in, in small amounts of cells, but like, I don't know how, like, I don't know if they could change my DNA or your DNA or, or could we like eat pills yeah. and change it? Hey, I have no I idea. That's uh, it's a really fascinating um, thought. But like, I if I I don't know exact the exact science, but I know like your body replaces its cells all the time. No, and I guess like every true. every three to four weeks or something like that, you're like an entirely new person from a cellular level. Okay, uh, you got to be careful though throwing around statistics like that because uh, yeah, somebody on the somebody on the comment section is going to be, be like, 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 no, it's like, actually years. six months. Whatever <laughs> it is, there's a number. I don't know sure. what it is, but, <laughs> but fair enough. So I guess maybe um you know maybe, maybe there's a way to just. To, I don't know, to create that. But anyways, it'd be it's a cool thought. So my, uh, my next question for you is your driving force, right? Just, so just like, you know, Spider-Man fights to save uh, New York or Batman fights to save Gotham or Google fights to index all the world's information, what is it that you guys fight for at Tattoo Now? Um, well, I mean, I suppose, you know, and again, it sounds cheesy, right? But, uh, uh, you know, using tattoos to help people become better people, make the world a better place, you know? And I mean, it's, I mean, it, it's not, it, it, that's the effect that we actually produce or help people produce mm -hmm. and, or facilitate producing. And uh, it's very self reinforcing, you know, and again, when, when you start, if, if people are facilitating bad tattoos, that should compounds poorly really quickly. It doesn't work. You know, after, you know, this long of, of helping people learn about getting tattoos to not pass judgment when somebody wants to get, you know, small tattoos upside down it's okay because eventually if you want you might be open to getting the you know more tattoo, you know elaborate tattoos or more uh, advanced tattoos um you know and ultimately it's like it might not be as adventuresome or rebellious just to get a tattoo anymore now that it's accepted it's still adventuresome to get a great tattoo from an awesome artist that is you know not necessarily easiest to get to mm -hmm. uh, to produce you know a masterpiece of, of artwork on your body that stuff is still special it is hard to get to um so uh, uh yeah i don't know did that answer the question yeah yeah i think it totally does so my next question for you is very practical right um we call it the uh, hero's tool belt you know maybe you got a big magical hammer like thor or maybe you've got a you know a uh, bulletproof vest like your neighborhood police officer, or maybe you guys just really like the way Evernote helps you manage your business with keeping track of your notes and written stuff. What, what's one of the, uh, one of the, or one or two of the tools that you guys use on a regular basis to um, sort of manage Tattoo Now? Maybe it's something you use to, to keep track of your clients or do your customer onboarding or, you know, take mm -hmm. care of your calendaring. It's just something that you couldn't live without with, the, uh, with Tattoo Now. Well, we use, I use two different, I basically use the two different uh, suites, uh, you know, the Google Doc, or it's not Google Docs, but it's like Google Docs, Google Sheets. Yeah, Google G Suite, they change the name G every couple of years. <clears throat> so uh, I use G Suite, um, and then I also use a Microsoft uh, Suite, and, I, and it basically, yeah. for me, I, I offer both of them to, to our clients as they're coming in, you know, which, where do you kind of... Um, base your stuff uh, either and it is amazing to me how much Google has in that G Suite of all like all the businesses that keep all of the documents on there you know the AI was over a, a G Suite could just I mean if they just did a search for P&L on all the Google Sheets they like they know the P&Ls of everybody <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, we yeah. probably, probably even sign off that they could use it um, but then so I'm like oh so I'll use Microsoft for some but then people like Google is but basically I use them both right and so I have the the bulk of my business planning is actually done in, in presentation software. So I have a version that's in Keynote and a version that's in uh, PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. um, I think I prefer PowerPoint a little bit better the way that it deals with linking. So for instance, um, you know, this, this, this presentation, I call it a living business plan, right? It looks, has all the different sections of a business plan. Uh, when you click through the links, then uh, you go to those different sections. So for instance, um, you know, we can go to the management section, and then inside of there, we would have, you know, the organizational chart or the, uh, the job descriptions. Um, you know, so if we click on the organizational chart, then we're looking at the, the circles and the lines for meetings and for job descriptions. Yeah. And now, I also have a version of that that's in, uh, you know, like I said, the other in G Suite. Um, 
and then those links from there will go to maybe an Excel document or to a Google spreadsheet that could be, uh, you know, a tool that's used um, inside of that. So for instance, if we were in the, the job description, there might be a link to a, a spreadsheet that is uh, um, like the scoreboard. Um, yeah. I, we call it the squad, the shit we care about. Whatever, whatever statistics <laughs> are important like for that. The, the shit we care about, the squad. Should we care about? It could be whatever, you know. Uh, and, and again, you, you know, and this is, you know, it's where one size doesn't fit all. Some people might want to use a sports metaphor. Some people use military metaphors. Some people use Dungeons and Dragons metaphors, whatever. Um, but then that would be, like I said, go out to a spreadsheet, you know, and again, for me, uh, I would look at like, you know, number of happy, number of customers, uh, number of reviews, you know, number of five star reviews, that kind of thing. So I'm, um, I'm kind of, I got a curious question for you on this. The, because uh, you said you've been doing this since, you know, the mid 80s. Right, so you basically got to uh, witness since the mid eighties. You were programming was, in the mid eighties. I was a fucking kid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so mid nineties, you've gotten to see a lot of these tools and suites, you know, develop and grow. Like, what, what? How do you feel about like just where technology is for a business today versus where it was in the late nineties, for oh, in so terms of being able to use software like Google Suite or the you know the Microsoft Suite stuff like that. Uh, it's funny, uh, like a couple of the, it's, and I haven't thought about this tons, of, but I think about it a bit. There's almost like two different sets of software. There's some that haven't really changed all that much. They've gotten a little bit better. And then they, uh, there's things that keep fucking changing and evolving like every three yeah. to five years, it seems, right? So like Photoshop, uh, Premiere, I, I do a lot of multimedia, uh, you know, work. That's, you know, pretty much the same, right? You know, it's uh, the, the premiere that I'm using now. I mean, I guess if I looked at the premiere from 20 years ago or whatever, would I be reminded how, how far it's come. Um, but the same skill set, and it feels very similar to me. I don't feel like that's advanced, you know. Now, yeah. again, the G Suite, to be able to have all of those tools at your fingertips for free. I mean, not for free. To, to give yeah. them access to using it for whatever evil purposes. I mean, I guess it's evil, yeah, right? They took, that out of, <laughs> they took that out of their motto, so it's fair game. <laughs> You know, right, if you have don't be evil as your motto for however long, and then you take that out of your motto. <laughs> you have to wonder what they're doing, right? It's a little fucked up. Like, right? just keep it. <laughs> Please. Just keep, it. Just keep the don't be evil. They're like, yeah, so, uh, so this, this year at our meeting, we all voted. We took, a, <laughs> took, a, took the decision unanimously. We've decided we're going to be evil now. <laughs> well, we don't want to say that, though. We'll just, we'll just take it out. Anyways. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so, but yeah, so, so the, the, that, that set of, you know, and then there's uh, like Ansa or, or Trello and all, you know, now there's almost too many, yeah. you know, where, you know, it's, it's difficult to, to uh, pick up man. Paradox tool. of choice, yeah. right? There's so many options nowadays. Um, so ultimately, and again, you know, people are still people, you know, we're changing a bit, we're evolving a little bit, but you know, ultimately, you know, if you have a, a person that is motivated to use whatever management tool, it's the, uh, outside things that they're motivated to do, not necessarily, although the ease of use of that tool is necessary. Um, yeah, it's, you know, there's, but there's yeah. a wide variety. So, so it's pretty cool. Like I said, it's, uh, it's fun and now I, I really want to get into the Oculus stuff. I want to get into that 3D. I need to get into the VR world. The, uh, um, it feels like that has uh, come a long way. And I haven't, I haven't you, actually played it. Do you think video. that'll have any impact on the tattoo world in terms of like maybe showing off art or showing off a, an artist's oh, skill, yeah. like beyond where like photography goes now? Yeah, 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 for sure. There, no, no question. You know, it's, it's, now it's again, it's not for everybody. Not everyone wants to have a VR 3D glasses in their living room. But, you know, the people that are, and there's artists that are getting in there, you know, the, the ones right now are, they, they are mapping definitely uh, tattoos on 3D models. For sure, but in this case, it's almost more useful, right? When you can sculpt something virtual reality like clay, and mm -hmm. then you know use your Photoshop to map surfaces, and then you can like make it big or make it small. Um, you know, you can make some pretty amazing artwork, and then you know as reference, bring that into right? the real world, so, and then you bring that into your painting. You can bring that in other things, but when you, you can bring it into tattoos, you know, pretty particularly. But uh, there's, uh, there's uh, yeah, Android the, Jones. Uh, I don't know if do you know Android Jones. He's like a 3D computer art. Um, he's worth looking up for people that are listening. Uh, Andrew Jones, Android Jones, he's on uh, the YouTubes. And again, cr crazy visual stuff. Lots of, and he was talking about some of the VR stuff that he was doing, uh, you know, recently. And anyways, but there's also tattooers that are using this. Darwin Enriquez is a tattooer in, in New York City. Um, yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, the, who knew that the there's, there's uh, tattooing is using advanced technology like, you know, the, the VR. A lot to, of them. 
I mean, we've, I remember 20 years ago, I was using Photoshop to, to put yeah. the picture of my back tattoo reference on my back. And, uh, you know, again, it's not, uh, one of the things I love is that gap, right? You know, uh, there's a ton of tattooers that take technology seriously. You know, Russ Abbott's another one. He has a uh, tattoo smart. He's got a whole website uh, dedicated to using computer tools. Uh, Guy Aitchison, you know, he's been, mm -hmm. you know, wrote, written up in Apple, you know, Apple magazine, him and Michelle Wartman, they, they've written up, you know, I don't know, it must've been over a decade now for using all of uh, the, you know, the computer tools. And um, now, like I said, for, for, you, you asked that question to a guy who's been a computer geek in the tattoo world for over 20 years. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a deep rabbit hole you can go into. <laughs> So yeah. my, my next question here is about your own personal heroes, right? So Frodo had Gandalf, Luke had Obi-Wan, Robert Kiyosaki had his rich dad. Who are some of your heroes? Were they real life mentors, speakers or authors, peers who were just a couple years ahead of you? And how important have they been to your journey so far? Well, I suppose uh, like there's the sci-fi authors, you know, Isaac Asimov, uh, Philip K. Dick, you know, Isaac Asimov to think about, you know, the far future and the way humans think, way robots think, but mostly the far future. Uh, you know, Phil K. Dick was definitely about like, what is a human being, you know, or what does it mean to be human and what does it mean to be a robot? Um, for like businessy kind of stuff. And again, I don't really have, I don't, I don't have tons like mentors. Like, you know, I, I get influences from some of the media and from people that I read, but so like I said earlier, Jim Collins, uh, like Nancy Dorte has really uh, helped me a ton with my presentation skills and my communication skills. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, for better or worse, I have often found myself, I, I, I get a ton of inspiration from my clients, right? So it's like, I don't necessarily have heroes, but I have a ton of uh, influences from amazing tattooers. You know, again, guy I talked to, you know, earlier, uh, you know, there's a lot of clients that I have in the tattoo world that are exceptionally talented. They have really strong voices. Um, you know, and they, they, they keep me, you know, in line. Everyone should sit in the fan, you know, about staying yeah. on the proper positive path. And um, so, that you know, they're all my heroes. My wife, you know, has uh, been exceptionally uh, influential in my thoughts, again, about education, about um, about helping, uh, help, helping people. You know, I kind of grew up white tr trash. And, and again, this is where I know heroes. And, and I mean, my parents split up when I was young, you know, didn't, you know, moved out when I was young. Um, so no one thing or yeah, no, like you just have but, like uh, a, a conglomeration of influences that have really helped shape who you are absolutely and, and you know one of the projects that i've been working on or, or do is I, I do produce events that are based on positive sharing of knowledge you know from with artists uh generally they're out in the middle of hard to play hard to get to places you know ski resorts in the off season or you know and we did one in venice italy you know so so assholes don't like take the pilgrimage to get out there into the middle of nowhere so so I got a ton of influence and uh, from, from the people that come to those events, you know, the, the teachers that come are always very inspirational, but even you know, all of the attendees, um, they're yeah. there and they're all hardworking. And um, so, you know, the, the tattoo community uh, at large and the education world, you know, through, through my work and, 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 and music and arts, the arts world. Right. And yeah. then uh, the education world, you know, teachers, you know, and, uh, you know, really do effectively, you know, I, I program computers, you know, my wife and early childhood educators, um, you know, they're effectively, you know, program, helping program people. So our parents, of course, but, uh, yeah, programming the next I, generation, you know, and, and, and if you, if you're not doing it intentionally, then all of a sudden, again, it's just like, you know, if, if you don't pay attention to parenting, you know, then shit just gets wild and out of control. And, uh, yeah. you know, it sounds, you know, maybe, you know, mostly wild and out of control sounds, you know, it might sound kind of fun when you're young, but wild and out of control is definitely not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so my, uh, my last question here for you is your guiding principles. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to bring it home a little bit. What are top one or two principles or actions that you put into practice every day um, that you think contribute to the success and influence of your, your company? Ones maybe you wish you had known when you started out on your hero's yeah. journey. <laughs> So, so, so the vocabulary that I would use or borrow from other people would be like the values, right? And so I guess in this case, you said two, I'm going to pick three, um, you know, the, the forces that I try to hone back in on, right? And, and again, tattooing is, uh, they're, they're in alignment with tattooing, um, like enlightenment, right? So it's enlightenment, uh, endurance, and evolution, and um, maybe not necessarily mm -hmm. in that order. Three E's, you know, uh, I believe in, in trying to always make sure that I'm opening my mind up to, to hearing other different types of, of thought, you know, 
Um, I don't want to. I don't want to close things out. Although I, I apologize, sometimes I talk over people by accident because uh, I think I know what people are gonna say. But point being is, I want to. I I do really want to um, hear and, and engage myself in as many different types of thought as possible. Now I don't want to waste my time on shit I don't you know I don't dig and I don't you know that I'm not down with. Um, but I don't ever want to like, close it out, and, uh, and I do want to be sympathetic to everybody's different points of view. So it's kind of like the enlightenment, you know, uh, uh, evolution, right? I always, uh, again, I pay attention to the, some sort of quantifiables, and then I want to change the way I'm doing things. And I also want to pay attention to the way I'm doing things, the way I'm communicating, uh, but then evolve that, right? So I always want to do a little bit better, you know, as, as you know, compounding effects. If you learn how to be a little bit better every day, and you know, just a little bit better every day, then uh, years later, all of a sudden, you're like, holy shit, I'm fucking, you become a better person. Yeah. Um, so evolving, or, or go backwards again, when you're evolving doesn't necessarily always mean making progress, right? Sometimes you might evolve and be like, oh shit, that was not the right way to evolve, you know. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we evolved you know? a, uh, a, a problem. <laughs> you know, but again, uh, not doing the same things and then having uh, different tools because I'm constantly trying to immerse myself in new ideas so I can try to bring different tools to do things differently. Um, you know, and then endurance, you know, uh, it takes uh, long periods of discomfort to get to the pretty thing, you know, and it's like this with tattoo. I learned it through tattooing and programming. Again, I had to program for, you know, 18 pages, you know, uh, code line by code line, every single character exactly the same. You know, that's most people don't have the patience to do that. Um, you know, in tattooing, most people don't have the patience to sit to have long periods of pain to, to get to a pretty tattoo. Um, you know, and then in business, you know, it's, uh, again, it, it's awesome when we're talking about traveling the world and doing events, you know, and, and all sorts of great places being around inspiring people. Um, but sometimes it takes getting the fuck kicked out of you or, you know, doing an event, you know, and losing tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, but or spending knowing months working 18 hour days to hit a goal. You know, but if you're, uh, you know, for me, uh, again, going back to, to the mission, you know, to the values, right? So I'm like, wait, my mission is to help amplify positive artists to leave the world a better place. No shit, right? Um, that, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, and I do this through uh, enlightenment, evolution, endurance. I've got some other core values, of course. Um, but, you know, if I try to stay focused on that, um, then I'm going to attract and work with people that are of similar ilk. And, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And I am very thankful to the tattoo world for, uh, and, and for, you know, you taking the time and all this kind of yeah. stuff that's happening and, and working. Cause, um, yeah, I don't know. Again, that's cool. ultimately, yeah. so <laughs> I like, uh, I like that thought too. The, uh, you said it was, um, in, enlightenment evolution. What was the last one? Endurance. <laughs> Endurance. Yeah. It's a definitely a long, it's a long play to get into the business game. It's not something you're, <laughs> it's not a sprint. That's for sure. There's a uh, million reasons not to do it. Yeah, a million reasons not to do it. That is absolutely true. I used to, when I was a younger business person, I used to think that uh, that anyone could do this gig. They could get into being an entrepreneur, and I've since realized that that is just not the case. Um, and <laughs> yeah, far more people you know, probably choose not to be entrepreneurs. That, that I've seen that effect, and that effect is bad when you're hiring people. Yeah, you know, and I, uh, I've worked with you know a fair amount of uh, world class players, you know, and they know exactly what they did to get there. Um, and I know exactly what I did to get here. And when we're together, sometimes we're like, well, everyone could do it, right? We know exactly what to do, but not everyone wants to do that shit or do it in their own way. Cause I can't, mm -hmm. can't do the same thing. But, but again, there's common, there's things that are common. Again, endurance is, uh, um, definitely one of those, uh, qualities that it feels like, um, if you're not willing to suffer, um, then you ain't going to get very far. Now, on the other hand, yeah. you don't want to suffer for nothing. <laughs> Reminds me of, uh, my, my thinking on it now comes from, uh, from Disney's Ratatouille, right? Where it's like the, what, I can't remember the guy's name, um, whatever the chef is, you know, it's like the, the, a, a great chef can come from anywhere. Um, is, it's not, not that anyone can be a great chef, but that a great chef can come from anywhere. And I feel the same thing is yeah. true about entrepreneurs is, you know, it's not that anyone can be an entrepreneur, but a great entrepreneur can come from anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's like that with all the different professions and, and yeah. guilds and everything, right? You know, and, I mean, the, ideally a society is helping us, you know, uh, educate ourselves and lighten ourselves and then let us get to those different places where we can settle in appropriately. Yeah. Makes uh, a lot of sense. For so, better or worse, we got to fight for it. Last thing I have for you on the show is something I call the hero's challenge. It's a simple challenge we do on every episode. Um, and it's basically this, do you have someone in your life um, or in your network that you think has a cool entrepreneurial story? Um, who are they? First names are fine. And why do you think they should come share their story on the hero show? 
Um, so uh, somebody that comes to, to mind would be uh, Vincent the Butcher. I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a while, but, oh, I guess it's not uh, very PC. It's not, I guess. That's well, all right. We don't, we don't care too much about PC. Okay, well, and maybe it is, uh, but he's all about connecting with the food, right? And um, he's got a, a great local butcher here. It's in town. It's uh, definitely, uh, uh, definitely a bit of a, you know, entrepreneurship is a battle in and having a, a butcher in a, uh, in a local small town is definitely, um, he's, he's learned a lot of great lessons a, and he's a great interview. He's got some great stories. And, uh, um, yeah, that'd be really cool. He definitely brings a lot of great uh, food into our town, so. Awesome. So we'll, we'll definitely reach out to him and see if we can, uh, if we can get him to come on the show. Um, last thing, thank you so much for coming on the show, Gabe. We really appreciate it. Where can people go to find you? Um, so the, this first question is where can they go to find you? And second question that goes along with that is who is sort of like your ideal client? If someone who's listening to this and thinking to themselves, you know, I really should reach out to Gabe. Who are those people? Uh, well, the, the first question is uh, GabeRipley.com um, or GabeRipley on Instagram, although the GabeRipley.com is, you know, uh, always going to be up to date Instagram, who knows. Um, as far as clients, yeah, you know, I suppose. Oh, so the other website is TattooNow.com. Um, my clients are, are generally a crafts people, people that are making things, you know, mostly tattoos or, you know, painters, you know, musicians, you know, again, restaurants, uh, blacksmiths, you know, any sort of, again, a, a, somebody who's making something of value, you know, with their hands and ingredients um, and is, you know, looking to, you know, expand themselves uh, into, or maybe not expand themselves, but to, to, to define exactly what success is and how to make a healthy culture or business out of it. And, um, you know, I definitely have a tendency to work with, you know, fringe arts, you know, um, Tattooing was illegal, as we were talking about earlier, now is not, you know, uh, cannabis was illegal and is now legal. You know, some of those, you know, uh, bridging the gaps of this mm -hmm. authentic craft, outlaw craft, and being a bridge into the wider world um, while not losing your authenticity. You know, again, tattooing is such a, a, a sacred, in a secular way, sacred art. You know, it's really important that when we engage in the business of tattooing, that we stay on the positive, shiny side of the, of the ethics. Um, and again, some, some of the same things with these other, you know, outlaw, outlaw arts and crafts, or whatever. But point being is um, those would probably be my uh, ideal clients. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I do have some seminars online, a webinar that, uh, again, the, the language is somewhat tattoo specific, but the, all of the tactics, all the practices, all the communication skills, all the meeting notes, all that stuff um, is pretty much applicable to, to any smaller, uh, or medium sized, you know, it'll, it'll drive a multi-million dollar business, all the stuff that we have going on. Awesome. That's really cool. So if you're listening to this show and you're in one of those spaces, right, where you're making things with your hands and you want help either defining that or growing that, take the time to reach out to Gabe. Um, it was GabeRipley.com where they can find you, right? Correct. Awesome. So thank you again so much for coming on the show, Gabe. Really appreciate it. It's been a fantastic having you here. Well, thank you for the time and, uh, and the thoughtful questions and uh, appreciate uh, all the listeners taking their time too. Awesome. Cool.